Oh my Ilium t shirt. Hello, Rexers. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> Hello, um, Rexers. Hello, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, welcome to our weekly session of Hanon Booth Raxers. Um, he, this is our community space where we chat with passionate members of the, of the RAC Wireless community to talk about their journeys and also to present some cool projects to you. Uh, as today's session, we are going to uh, present a project that our guests pre pre prepared for today. So this is something that is completely new. So we are super excited to, to share with you all. Uh, for those joining for the first time, I am Maria Hernandez, Developer Relations Lead at RAC. And with me as every fighter, Jose Marcelino. Hello, everyone, again. <laughs> uh, and yeah, and today, Friday uh, session, we are going to be chatting with two passionate individuals who have been contributed a lot in the development of LoRaWAN networks uh, based in Spain using the Things Network. Mark, Sochek, welcome. Cheers. Hello, Mark and Cheers. another, and another okay. Jose. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Hey, welcome, guys. Thanks for joining us today. You have been, you already joined us in a in previous session and shared a little bit about you and the projects you are working on as well as other cool things. But today is like kind of a different session. We're not going to have like a, a like a, a lot of questions about you and all your all the cool stuff you do. It's more about presenting the cool demo that you prepare for today. But however, it, it's good to introduce you to our community for those who are joining for the first time. So if anyone, um, for all of those who are connected during the online session, and if you have any doubt, you can jump uh, on the comment section with any question you may have, and we will be super happy to address them during the conversation if it is appropriate, or we can leave it for the end of the session when we have a, a Q&A session. So just to start uh, and to get you know a little bit more better for those joining for the first time, uh, just to share a brief about yourself, can you share a little introduction about yourself and and the, all the cool things you have been doing within the past years? I don't know, just, so Jay, we can start with you, so then yeah. we can go with Mark. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have to say, have you yeah. Oh, can you hear me? Sound. Yeah, we can hear you okay, now. Now we can hear okay, you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Maybe I can start. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm very sorry. I'm having problems all day long with my connection. I think it's Firefox that's pissing me off. <laughs> okay, yeah. then. Um, well, I'm Jose Perez. I'm a member of the TTN community in Barcelona. I, I work as a freelance, and I've, I've been working for Rack Wireless for the last few months. Uh, so I'm very happy to, to introduce a, a gateway with a Rack concentrator in it and a standalone solution with top uh, technologies right now. Yeah, absolutely. This is super exciting. So. Let me introduce uh, myself. Meanwhile, Jose tries to solve his uh, connectivity issues. So I'm Marcos, uh, developer advocate at Valena. I'm also running the IoT Barcelona meetup and created other meetups like the IoT Munich and, and more. I'm getting interested since, yeah, a long time ago on Laura One um, networks and LP1 as well networks. And actually something that um, that it's for me really interesting. It's is the ability of create like a private network on yourself for testing or just because you want to create like a Laura one private server. And this is what we have been working with Chosa to have the availability on a really simple way, not just following a, an infinite tutorial of multiple copy and paste, but just clicking a button, you can have your own, the things that stack a Laura one server up and running and yeah, to test or just because you want to, to have a private network. Amazing. And this is going to be based on Raspberry Pi and the Fiend, right? Yeah, actually, I think it's compatible with Raspberry Pi 3 and 4. Okay. Actually, well, we are going to show these details, but the 
one of the containers it's for arm v7 which runs on 32 bits so this is why we have this compatibility of three and four because, mm -hmm. and it's going to run on Balina os in this case the demo that we are going to show but i'm sure that this can be compatible on any raspberry pi that has a docker container running on it right Chosa? yes so I have here with a uh, rag two two four five I had, mm -hmm. which is what I will I'll be using for the demo today. Nice. So great. I have another one with my lovely eight three three. I love this one because it's the first one I had by rack, so I still have it around to play with. Yeah, and I'm and I'm going to use uh, yeah my Balena Fin. Balena Fin for people that don't know it, it is a compute module three uh, carrier board. Um, uh, yeah. De device that it's actually industrial grade. Uh, so for people who need to have like a kind of a Raspberry Pi, but with industrial grade on electricity, on memory using an ENMC and others. So this is a, a great device that we have at Belena. Uh, we are actually right now designing the Belena 2, uh, the Fin 2.0 with the Compute Module 4. But that's uh, for another episode. And I'm, I'm going to use the RAC uh, 2287 uh, Laura concentrator, so okay. an SX thirteen oh two. Right, we, we are going to show that. Yeah, you, you can configure uh, different flavors of the Laura concentrators on the project as well. If you want to have all together, you know, the the private network uh, that's uh, on the um, the gateway and at the same at the same place. That I think this is really interesting. Yeah, having like the ability to to use like. Uh, multiple platforms and also multiple different type of concentrators and having like the ability to choose just with one click and then press a button to deploy it is a, a really cool thing uh, to to demonstrate today. So like that is like for the demo that we're going to be talking a little bit more um, in the next few minutes. So both of you have been like pioneers in in the deployment of the Things Network community in Spain. Uh, can you share a little bit more like about all your community experience uh, working with the community right there and also the different activities you have been doing uh, with the community in a local level? So maybe this is Joseph who should um, answer this question because he's uh, more, more TV and cat. Uh, the community <laughs> guy, is he? Yes. <laughs> okay. Oh. I'm really gonna shut up my camera because I, I, it doesn't work. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, when when I will be doing the demo, then there's, there will be no need for to see me. So that's okay. <laughs> um, um, sorry, Maria. Can you can you repeat the question because I couldn't hear it. <laughs> for sure, that you have been like pioneer uh, in in the, like in all the the management of the things that were community in Spain. So can you share a little bit more about your community experience as well as the different uh, activities you have been carried out during the last year in a local level? Well, actually, um, last year has been pretty tough. We have a couple of very cool activities we have been, which have been hold on because we couldn't do it. And um, the best, maybe the most interesting one we have right now is that we are going to conduct maybe on September a series of workshops on how to build your own uh, LoRaWAN gateway using uh, actually the one I just showed off is one of the the ones we have for the for these workshops we have 15 of them with the boxes with the antennas these these ADB, ADBI antennas by rack too and I'm very I I would love. I would have loved to to be able to do this workshop like last year, but it was just impossible because it's meant to be done on in public persona. And since it's public, restrictions are even tougher than in in private places. So we couldn't do it. Uh, but yeah, maybe I hope that in September we will be do we will be doing it. And be very cool like having 15 new gateways for the TTN community in Barcelona. It's interesting. I don't want to imagine your house with 15 uh, <laughs> concentrators, uh, pies, enclosures, and 15 uh, eight. <laughs> so. Yeah, right now they are at, at our local, <laughs> our local in Barcelona city. I, I don't live oh, in okay. Barcelona, but I, I've, I've been having them for like months here uh, until my wife told me, okay, 
to get, get rid of this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I know we have people, yeah, that have yeah wife policies uh, for uh, yeah, not having too much electronics at home. Yeah. In yeah. my case, like that is not a problem because like it's for my own. So yeah, <laughs> that is not a problem for me. But I completely understand that. Nice, nice, and and also like over the past few months, like a hot topic in the, in the IoT community, and also like more in the in the Laura One ecosystem has been like the migration from from the of the things network from the version two to the thing stack version three. So can you share more details about like the different changes and improvement made during the last like in the last version, as well as the most significant challenges you uh, you have um, encountered uh, in the community uh, during this big transition. Well, actually, uh, the community is, at first, there was a little bit of um, <laughs> because they were kind of forced to change a lot of things and not only migrate their gateways, but also migrate their applications. And so you can imagine if it's if that happens to a private company, then you start to put on uh, to, to define a, a, a migration flow and some kind of stuff. But in the community, that's that's harder because we are not so organized. So it's hard to, to do. Um, there were a lot of changes because basically the, the, the thing stack, uh, the new version of the, of the LoRaWAN network server is very different because it, it was written. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. It can was written in. Yeah, OK. Sorry? I, you saw it was the, written from scratch. Uh -huh, OK. Completely new. So there are a lot of changes, there are a lot of configurations, new, new, new things to configure. And people uh, at first was like, uh, yeah, before that, creating a new gateway or creating a new device was just a few clicks. Now I have to go through a, 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 a forum with an endless uh, list of, of questions. But but things are changing. They are doing changes. They are they are uh, hiding things that are not completely necessary. And the last new is that even though in the beginning there was like the packet broker, which is the communication between the old uh, the things network, was only one direction. So it was uh, there was only one way to to migrate migrate the applications first, migrate the gateways in the end. Uh, three weeks ago, they decided to do it uh, two-directional. So uh, that helps a lot in in, in doing, doing the migration at your own uh, path, at your own uh, velocity, right? So that, that has helped a lot in the migration. And mm -hmm. people is, is doing things right now. I think it's okay. You cannot, you cannot create new on the version 2 now. So everything is, is created on version 3. And yeah, I think they have listened to the communities a little bit. <laughs> That's cool. That is like the, the important and I, part. And Josie, I, I could imagine that, yeah, doing this migration as a, as a community, and I can imagine all the TTM communities all around the world that probably they met up like once per month or maybe once every three months, no? Like doing this yeah. migration that usually it's very, you know, you, you need to, to have other um, peers next to you, you know, to, to give you energy to do it. it. Maybe it has been even harder, you know, with these virtual events and, and not having the ability of meeting personally, right? Yeah, completely. Even even people very close to, to the community was kind of lost on how to do it and when to do it. And you have to take into account that we have around 60 gateways. A quarter of them belongs to a company that they have decided to use the Things Network, so the public uh, network. Another quarter belongs to, not belongs, but it's managed by us. And those gateways are managed by individuals. Maybe some people have two, three, but most of them only have one. And so it's hard to get in touch with them and help them um, do the migration in a proper in the proper time, but now it's easier because they can just migrate the gateways when when they can, and and that would be it. Yeah. 
Yeah, I remember on the latest uh, TTN conference, we were doing a presentation on how to migrate gateways from V2 to V3. And, and then it appeared this new packet broker that it made the whole tutorial completely useless. Yeah, um, but it's cool. And we were <laughs> saying gateway is the last thing, but now it's not needed. No? Yeah, yeah. We were actually actually uh, joking about uh, doing the migration of the gateways on the, on the 31st of December <laughs> at, exactly. at midnight. <laughs> That's the, before, the now, yeah, before going to parties, <laughs> right? Yeah. Nice, nice. So, we should do uh, a live stream on that. <laughs> that would be, be super nice, for sure. We can make yeah. like a, a live um, a live section in the Discord channel so everyone can join us during a hackathon time. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Uh, so, uh, another question that I would like to, to highlight over here is that. What, what suggestion you would give to those who want to develop IoT solutions on their Laurel or uh, Laura One? Uh, like what you can share like from your own experience from the beginning. Maybe you addressed this question on the previous session we had, but this is a new one and I would like to share your thought as well over here since we are talking about Laura Laura One and the things network. Uh, Mark, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you. <laughs> that's, a, that's a hard question, actually. Uh, so my suggestion will be um, to try to find a, a local community where uh, you can find yeah people who can help you on setting up everything. Or actually, if, if you find a local community, you can see if there is coverage actually near by your house. And then probably next thing that you can do, maybe if you have coverage, it's to have a, a Laura note to start playing and then maybe yeah start playing with a um, with a Laura one gateway um, yeah, yeah and it's as simple as a, as a pie with a with a Laura concentrator so um, and, and and today it's super easy and, and the the prices of the technology are I, I was speaking with Jose some days ago like wow I I would love to have this like 15 years ago, you know, mm -hmm. on a, on the price of a Rosary Pi and, and just installing this on a click that would have changed uh, completely, you know, my story maybe as an engineer. <laughs> but um, as, as, if I would start from scratch right now or I would move to a country where there is, where I don't know anyone, first thing I, that I would do to be part of this little one moment is to to contact the communities, the local communities. Right. Nice, nice. And Jose? Well, yeah. Um, yeah, actually, I think uh, building communities, building local communities and, and contribute to local communities is key. And the next step would be to uh, to federate, to, to have a way to uh, join and share uh, our experiences, our projects with other communities. Uh, this is one thing I didn't mention is we've there, there has been a project in, in, in Spain about a bird watching uh, project using LoRaWAN, and it was it was led by the community in, in Zaragoza, which is like 300 kilometers from here, and and they managed to involve four, four or five different LoRaWAN uh, the Things Network communities all around Spain, and that was that 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 is what we should do. We should share, we should uh, learn from each other. And, and one of the things we will explain today is that um, even though we will be deploying a private network, so to say, because it will be a local uh, network uh, server, we can uh, federate those servers. We can build smaller network servers per region, per, loca per location, and then federate them together to build a more resilient network uh, of the things network. Are you going yeah. to show that today as well, or does that work it through the packet broker? Yeah, through the or... packet worker, broker. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So nice, like, based like that you are going to present that today, uh, this is like more like a general question uh, about like jumping to, to this demo, but why we should deploy networks locally? That's a that's a very good question. Um, 
I have been uh, I have been advocating for cloud uh, technology since uh, ten years ago, so <laughs> it's it's funny. No, but I I think yeah. So well, for people who has been following me, I have been I have been as well very uh, related with Sigfox technologies, yeah. and and one of the things that um, I wanted to have on Sigfox was to to get to have like a local uh, private network of. For sick folks, no. And then when I discovered the Things Network, when they made the Kickstarter, it was like, wow! So these guys are gonna enable me to have like a private network uh, for even to suggest to companies, uh, no, nearby me to set up their own low power weight area network on, on a private server. But yeah, finally, the Things Network, if you were using their their cloud server, it was kind of a you no know, Sigfox uh, similar system. Uh, but now with the Things Stack and these open source um, community edition that we are gonna show, yeah, it, it's yeah, it gives you this possibility if you are a company to really um, create your own private network. Uh, if you are a city hall as well. And then share it with the people. And then this packet broker that just explained, it's really interesting because you can have your own private network and open it to anyone who wants to join this network. Uh, and so, so I would say maybe for testing, it's it's really interesting. If you don't have coverage, that's well, maybe that's well. It's interesting that you can create a, 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 a public gateway, you know, and, and provide coverage on your area. But maybe it's a uh, I see a lot, but maybe I have this hat of of sales guy that maybe some companies are gonna be more safe to have these private uh, networks uh, running this uh, the things that stack um, uh, server network just just because it's now available and super cheap. So. Yeah, I think it's more like the difference, like the like main difference. Uh, for this kind of deploy deployment comparison, like with the typical deployment, which is like the community on the open network, basically. Yeah, actually, when the sorry, when the next stack comes up, the the V four stack comes up, you at least you're in more control over the transition, right? It not yes, it that's to, that, mm. correct. Correct. That's one of the reasons to have to be more in control, as long as the uh, communication bef between the different uh, servers are open and the transition is mm -hmm. is well done then yeah we we would be able to stay on v3 as long as we as we need to and then move to v4 as long and we are actually what what mark said we are starting to see uh companies and and even public administrations uh, who have deployed their own private networks for to manage water management or or garbage management and they are interested in opening it so they will have their own devices they will have their own LoRaWAN network server and and they will manage their own data but uh, open it to the things network so anyone can use uh, the, the, the the network for their own devices and we are starting to see that that's cool amazing nice I think like we are already are in the time of the demo I hope everything works. Let's cross our finger for a live demo. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, yeah, feel free to share your screen and let's start with this. Did you pray yeah, to well, the demo gods, Joseph? <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe in them. <laughs> share screen. Let me share my yeah. screen. When did you get this working? I'm just curious. When was today. It? Uh, today. Yeah. Yeah. Was ago? Today, today. <laughs> Uh, that's Fine. that's a way to do it. Yeah, it's last minute demo. So if something Great. fails, you, you already know why. <laughs> <laughs> so, we, uh, yeah, what we have uh, developed is uh, uh, what we have uh, put together is a way to deploy the thing stack network server onto a Raspberry Pi using Balena and optionally adding uh, other services like, like basic station gateway protocol. So you can actually have a standalone gateway with the gateway software and the network management software. And it's deployed on the Balena Hub projects, which maybe, Mark, you can explain a little bit what it, what it is. Yeah, sure. So Balena Hub, it's a, 
IoT Edge Application Marketplace uh, of applications running Balena, uh, running on Balena OS. For people who don't know what is Balena, maybe you use Balena Etcher um, to flash SD cards or USB drives. So this is what yeah, this is one of the open source projects that we do. Uh, we also have a Balena OS, which is a lightweight OS operating system, Linux operating system for devices. And actually, uh, the Balena OS runs applications on containers. This is uh, our main differentiation on our Linux operating system. And we also have an open source runtime uh, for running containers. And we created this Balena Hub, actually, to help uh, developers and companies to distribute their applications to everyone. And we hope that we can inspire developers all around the world uh, to submit here their applications um, and enable anyone to install the, them into yeah, Pies, Fins, and so on. I didn't mention that Balena OS is compatible with more than 70 different uh, devices uh, that are connected to the internet, from Intel NUX to NVIDIA Jetsons or Pies or similar. So yeah, it's a great um, way to share and to inspire other people. And this is how we want to yeah, um, distribute this, uh, the things the stack network server. I think it's a great way to just enable you to in one click, install it um, and forget about it. Yeah, cool. So uh, yeah, well, for this demo, we will be using, as I said, a uh, Raspberry Pi or it should work with a Raspberry Pi 3. We have not done any uh, tests on how many devices we could uh, have connected to the LoRa network server, so there's a lot of uh, But we will have this Raspberry Pi 4 with a RAG 2245 Pi hat. We will need a SD card, of course, and power supply and an Ethernet cable. Um, also, it's... Uh, it's not necessary but for the Pi inside your network. I do that in my router in an easy way, just mapping the max And you can also, yeah, everything is here. So I will, yeah. So this is a Balena, Balena Hub. This is a project we've been working on. Uh, and this is a message. So we have this project here. You can have all the information about the requirements, about hardware, software, network, how to deploy it, the steps we will be following in a few seconds, uh, how to log in, everything, and even uh, some details on how it works on the inside, or how to, well, the different variables you can configure, how to uh, add the basic state uh, protocol so you can actually use a with uh, any of the RAG developer concentrator, with any other Raspberry Pi with a concentrator. I'm sorry for the connection. <laughs> if, if, uh, if I get lost. <laughs> yeah, um, I can follow up if you want. <laughs> Maybe we can say that as well, <laughs> that this is a working progress uh, repository, right? Uh, we, have a, a yeah. we have a long to-do list at the end, if I'm not wrong, uh, just uh, maybe you can share. Um, we we have tested this with our LoRa nodes, but yeah, it would be nice as well to learn how to uh, yeah do a testing performance of a, of a network server. I don't know how how people uh, do this testing performance with multiple devices. How can you fake uh, like thousands of LoRa of LoRa one devices? You know, Jose or Maria? I think more than fake, I will say simulate. Yeah, how do you simulate? Uh, yeah. I can. F I think you can find some so anyone. stuff for, or on Helium for that. <laughs> okay, so maybe yeah. we'll they have we'll lots we'll of people that. faking gateways here at some point. So uh, there's a few projects on GitHub for that. Okay, but but these are gateways. Yeah, but the gateways send uh, send uh, LoRa packages as well. Okay. Yeah, yeah, they will simulate everything. Yeah. Okay. That's interesting, but yeah, it's a, so it's open to contribution. So we are showing something that works. And actually, when we say that, yeah, two hours ago what we made the last comment or the last pull request, means that so yesterday it was already working. But we we needed some over engineered solution uh, that maybe we can get into that at the end of of the demo. Uh, but the good news is that it works straightforward. So if you click, uh, well, if we are going to show that. Um, 
the, the steps, but uh, it works. So trademark in my computer. <laughs> yeah. So just a, uh, um, yours. Yes. So th the way to do it in a one click would be to just click the fork this fleet button, which will to Balena. I do it now because I want to do it in a more um, detailed way using differently but this would be the one actually I already have this application created with this one here and as you can see there are no devices here. so uh, what I would do is, is to add a new device that would create for instance from in my case it would be a Raspberry Pi 4 please <laughs> Raspberry Pi for production Ethernet only, so I will have it connected via cable, and I will download this image. I won't do it now. I, hope I already have an SD card with this flashed in. It's just download it and use, for instance, Balena Etcher to to burn in to burn it into a an SD card. Then the other. And so that's what I will be doing now. You cannot see me. Well, I might try to. But I don't know if it's going to work. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, Oops. let me. So I have. <laughs> Sorry, over here. Let's no problem. See. Okay. So I just. In my Raspberry Pi, it's a Balena OS uh, virgin uh, operating system, and I just power it. Power it. So and uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> maybe Joseph, you can we put it and show. So we are you are now installing the the, the things stack server network, um, but with a basic station. Maybe we should show uh, the repo, no, and how this is possible. What do you think? Because maybe we jump one. Yes, step. Well, check out the repo, clone the repo, mm -hmm. so you can see what I'll be doing. Uh, okay. uh, Actually, this is the image I downloaded before, oh, okay. uh, which I just um, and what I would next do is to clone the repository. Mm -hmm. And uh, as you can see, uh, we have the Compose YAML. If you know Docker, this is pretty important. It's a uh, it's, uh, uh, a YAML file which defines uh, features, the Postgres database service, Ready service, and the stack service, which is actually the, the thing stack service. And we have added a few more. And what I would do is just to enable the basic station service, just to so I would be deploying the thing stack alongside basic station, right? Yeah, it would be nice to um, see, yeah, all the legacy packet forwarder um, applications, no, running as well here. Maybe, no, maybe compatible. Yeah, that's something we have to work on. Yeah, another one we have here is the Wi-Fi Connect service, which is a very handy one, which lets you configure the Wi-Fi of the Raspberry Pi. On the fly, so after you boot it up, it opens a, a captive portal and actually configure the Wi-Fi of your router yeah. without exactly. having to to flash it. Uh, so yeah, so what case, we have to do. Is, yeah, in yeah, case sorry. that you have to move your your uh, your server now because you're testing things or whatever, it's very handy to have a Wi-Fi connect on on your device. Yeah, another thing we have to do is to uh, check out the submodules because all these third-party uh, services are based on will allow us to just check them out. And now we have everything. And it's we have a complete find all the requirements for uh, the thing stack deployment plus a basic station deployment. 
And what we should do now is to just use the Balena CLI, which lets us manage all our applications. And the one I want to deploy is this one, the TTS Network Server Basic Station, which is the one I was showing up before, this one. And okay, uh, yeah. So we will be pushing the application. Sorry, sorry. Like for that that last portion when you were in the application before, like uh, seeing the device. It in the version you was waiting until the Raspberry Pi boots uh, to appear on the Valdena site, right? Right, and once yeah. Actually, mm -hmm. this is not what it's supposed to, but because we are missing the basic station. Maybe you can do Valdena yeah. push. We have time, so. Yeah, we have time. So <laughs> I will do the Valdena push. Okay. See. So the Valdena push Valdena. Push. So what, what it's going to happen with on a Valena push, it's actually um, it's just it's going to push the code of the repository with the Docker Compose that he already showed. And, and what it's going to happen is that Valena Cloud builders will get that uh, rep repository and will build a release for that application. If there are devices connected to that application, there is a supervisor that is a process, well, a container, a process running on the devices that are asking all the time, "Hey, there is a new release for me," mm -hmm. and and when there will be a, the new release on on the application, every device uh, will download the, the latest release. Mm -hmm. And so, what it's doing now, it's it's it's, it's sending the new Docker Compose that that uh, I did it to the Valena builders. Okay. Uh, something that is interesting is that uh, Valena uh, runs uh, deltas. That means that we only, so you only send like the bits and bytes that are different from the previous release. So actually, mm -hmm. Jose already had a release on that application. So we're going to see that only the differences uh, is uh, yeah, are the bits and bytes that are going to be sent. So if, for example, if you are on cellular connectivity on your uh, lower one gateway, and you do a new release, that's OK. It's only the bits and bytes that are different. As you see running using cache, cache it's because uh, nothing changed on this. But, um, so this is as well something different that we have at Melina running on deltas. Yeah, so it, it, this, this process usually takes about minutes. In the meantime, um, I can go on with the explanation of what it does mm -hmm. because I think my connection is shitty right now. <laughs> so, 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 yeah, what? Well, anyway, um, so the details on what it does is that it actually, uh, um, it, so when you, when you deploy the thing stack, you have to configure a few things like where are the Different services that it uses, which uh, uh, We are using self-signed certificates, so you will have HTTPS as well. So you can actually make it public to the internet if you want to. Um, and also, the project takes care of providing a few variables you will need like the TCURI and TC Trust, which is the, cert the root certificate. Uh, so the, the other, the, the basic station services will take these values and out to So uh, um, we try it for work once, once it's deployed, which is happening right now, uploading images. Yeah, so successful. If I go here now, I should start seeing that it's downloading the new images for the these three services plus the basic station one. one. Yeah, so now if, if you go back to the console, if, if we see the Charlie the Unicorn, um, 
yeah, 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 it's still uh, yes. uh, still uploading the image. Yeah, no. uh, you, we see. So so we can see. Yeah. So in three minutes twenty two, um, we built uh, this release, and now you can see on the Verena Cloud that uh, yeah that the uh, the supervisor it's unloading the deltas for images. You can see on the logs of the top right uh, right, and and now it's as well downloading the new service that it's a basic station. So what we are going to have, that Jose already explained, is we are going to have the basic station, Loro One Gateway, on a service. That it's it's going to be the packet forwarder from the, all the Loro messages in the air um, to the to the network. We are going to have the Postgres database, uh, the Redis, and then the Loro One stack um, that it, it's going to run all the all the private network. Um, it's interesting if you go to check the the, the things stack um, project on on GitHub, uh, you're gonna see that uh, it it run it runs uh, another type of database. It's it's not running automatically uh, Postgres. It runs Cockroach TV if I'm not wrong, and and well, it's commented Postgres. But what happens is that that's prepared for x86 um, architectures. So for ARM uh, architectures like a Raspberry Pi, it's an ARM um, uh, processor. Uh, the only possibility is to run on Postgres, but that's that's okay. Um, that's the only difference uh, with the original version. And what else? It's uh, it's updating. Um, maybe to mention that yeah. Um, sorry, Jose, go ahead. No, I, I was saying it's still downloading the basic station service or container mm -hmm. image. So, so it's going to happen a couple of things right now. One of the things that it's going to happen is that on tax, it will appear the EUI of the basic station gateway. This is like yeah. standard. Uh, so this is the EUI that you will need to uh, register the gateway on, on the, the things the stack um, server. On the other hand, it's going to reboot a couple of times because yeah, well, we need the model uh, variable. Yeah, yeah. What I was going to do is, uh, as the basic station services is is complaining that you know which model to use, um, so we have to define the model of the concentrator we are using, which is the uh, uh, rack two two four five has an S Semtec thirteen oh one inside. So this is what it will do. Now it will reboot the services every time we do a change. Yeah. Well, let me say the every words, time we do a change in the configuration. <laughs> every, every time that there is a change on the device variables, uh, the device re uh, reboots uh, to get those devices, uh, those variables on the system. Uh, the thing that it happens here, it, depending on the variables that you change, it, it puts a couple of times because it regenerates the the certificate that we were seeing on TC Trust. Okay. So we are automatically generating a self-signed certificate so the system can run on, under HTTPS. And as basic station runs on web sockets, on secure web sockets, it's as well using that self-signed certificate, if I'm not wrong. So uh, apparently the service has put up. The basic station cannot connect because it's not authorized. And that's because we have not um, Created the gateway on the on the the things that network server yet. So what we are going to do now is to get in. Log in. Yeah. Yeah. Let's yeah. 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 let me let me translate that <laughs> if that's okay for you. Just <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you speak a very weird language today, but uh, yeah, the, the thing is that uh, we have several possibilities, uh, but we we got today working the the most simple uh, way to do it that it's running on your local IP address of your device, okay. even if it's not static IP. So at the moment it's not static; we don't have any domain. We are going to show you after this that it also can work with static IPs or it can run with domains, uh, right. whatever. But if you want to access just on a local network, it works with your, the local IP of your device. So the only thing, <laughs> cool, uh, Manuel. <laughs> Manuel, so, I try to play, it's get, he's getting great. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, just 
copying your uh, local IP from the Belena cloud, you can you get into this uh, potential security risk ahead because this, the certificate that we are using is a self-signed certificate that we generated. You accept this risk. And the user ID is admin, and the password is change me. It's on the documentation on the GitHub repo. Nice. And if you log in and you write properly change me, Right. <laughs> then, yeah, you get into the <laughs> things stack uh, running on uh, on your Pi. So it's time to register the gateway. Say so, yeah. So we have the UI of. Oh, nice! How did you do that? Yeah, I, I want and to know. This... Actually, I always <laughs> copy the the tag. Then I place it on on the on the notes. A portion and then just uh, take the the number. <laughs> Actually, it looked like they didn't copy it right. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, that's also yeah. AIP. Now yes, now it's nice. working. Uh, the very the very basic things we have to configure, which is the frequency plan, the gateway, create the gateway, and now we have to create an API key for the gateway. Okay. Yeah, this is a standard procedure for a basic well. station to register a basic station. Mm -hmm. um, yep. You just grant, uh, yeah. yeah. Key. And then you introduce a TCE key on the add variables. Uh, we can have those sort of introduced with null or something like that, maybe. Um, then, yeah, now the device is going to reboot again, as we showed you before. And once it's rebooted, and the basic station will uh, will start actually because uh, it will be recognized by the by the lower one uh, server. If I'm not wrong, let's see. As you can see, we are running the TC right that it's running the the service. It's localhost and the port the eight 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 seven. So we are not playing here with uh, any domain or anything specific. We are going to see that uh, this is possible as well. And looks like it's connected. Oh, cool. Yeah. So we have the, um, the gateway connected. And probably because it yeah. shows us how there are a lot of, uh, <laughs> lot of one nodes <laughs> sending data. Let's see if we can get any any traffic on the gateway. Uh, I'm going to use a, a whiz blog I have here oh, nice. uh, to do the demo. So yes, yeah, you can see it's already trying to join. Um, I will, mm -hmm. yeah. Of course, it's not defined in this. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Then I will just create a, a new application. Cool. Which I will call Rockstars, um, and create new device. Uh, which will be using uh, over the activation. I think you can also already, well, uh, the, the whistle already appeared in the brand section as well. So you can add it as brand, as brand the device instead of manually. Oh, mm -hmm. nice. Yeah, I'm doing all the configuration. Uh, I, I have the whiz block already, uh, so I'm just using the same keys I had. And now I will be uh, so we don't get nice. What data are you going to send? Jason? That's yeah, uh, sorry. What data are you going to send? Yeah, actually, I'm sending information from a GPS and accelerometer okay. and I will be using Cayenne. I'm, I'm using Cayenne uh, as a protocol. Uh, so yeah, this will be. I have this very first information with the accelerometer information. Uh, the GPS does not work pretty well uh, inside my house because walls are thick. But if it doesn't, if it doesn't, if it doesn't have a lock, then it will just not be. nice. So you are shaking. But it the looks like it's working. It data, right? Yeah, it works. Yeah, it works in uh, yeah, and on Manuel's computer as well. It works, right? <laughs> so, so how, connection problems. Aside. <laughs> so, Maria, did you clock? I, I think Wi-Fi. 
how long it takes to get a little one private? Uh... Yeah, we take, we start uh, when we're 25 minutes. So basically, <laughs> we took like 25 minutes to, to finish all the setup. But Manuel, who was following following the, the repository, he made it work after uh, previous than us. So <laughs> <laughs> that time, yeah. it less. And it is super interesting, like there, like, as you mentioned at the beginning, there are uh, more things to do. Uh, this is uh, like an open source project where everyone uh, can contribute to do uh, to, to it. And at the end of the report, you can find like the different bullet points with the uh, things that needs to be uh, done uh, in the near future. Uh, so if someone uh, really wants to collaborate with this, uh, please just go to the repo, connect with, with us via the Discord channel or also via the, the repo. And we were super happy to to address your your contributions to the repo as well. Super nice, guys. Thanks for for preparing sure. this thank you, thank you. guy for, for the session because I know that you work on this just for the session. So <laughs> it is like amazing. It's really appreciated from, from your side. Um, no, and I think it's interesting because, for example, I, I got a request from people who were asking me like, hey, so there is a project paid by the government of my country and they are asking me, so we are going to use Laura One, uh, Laura Notes. Do you think we can use a project uh, on Belena where we can deploy a, um, a network, but where the data doesn't leave the country, for example? So this is a great example, right? That you can, such as in uh, with super simple technology and very cheap technology, you can do it, for example. Oh, sure. Mm -hmm. You can have a network on the, on your Raspberry Pi. Very good. Exactly yeah. a network and a gateway. Yeah. And then if the packet broker gets uh, no gets improved on on this example, maybe this this uh, you, your own server can be federated as well with other networks and, mm -hmm. and or, be, or even redirect data no, to to other uh, servers and help other people that are using the the lower one networks. Okay, I do have a question. Like, can you Actually, unplug the internet now from the server? Will it still run, or does it need the connection to Balena all the time? It no? needs the connection to Balena to to manage it, but the the server, the lower one network server, will work just fine. So you could exactly. put it on a farm now mm -hmm. without the internet, and it will still work, right? That's yeah. Cool. Yeah. The only thing it's not going to work it's uh, all the connection with Balena, the the VPN, the. Yeah. Yeah. And the supervisor checking if there are new versions of the. Oh, mm -hmm. of the but the local IP, you'd still be able to connect to the web interface of the the thing stack, right? That that's fine. Yeah, actually, the supervisor is just another container work uh, in, inside the, the the host. So yeah, the host is working. The IP would be the same, and the services. So, but cool. for this, like an I an an I uh, an static IP address needs to be uh, added before to the device or or not? Well, it's it's recommended actually in the repo. You have the instructions yeah. on how to set a static IP okay. on a Balena device, and I would mm -hmm. also recommend to set a domain name, even if local, because it would make it. Easier. So, uh, a small uh, information on how to do it on the on the repo readme. I use PyHole at home, so for me it's pretty easy. Just create a new DNS entry on PyHole and it works. Mm -hmm. But you can also use an external DNS like it's kind of weird, but it will work. Yeah. yeah. The only thing is, once you change the domain, the certificates will be uh, created again to match the domain. So that will mean that if you log in the to accept the risk of a new certificate again, that's it. Yeah, exactly. Maybe I don't, I don't know if you're still sharing screen or not, but there is a, a variable that it's called TTS domain. So if you change, okay. uh, yeah, if you want to use another domain that you created, so you even use that, that introduce your domain 
and then automatically will uh, no, the certificates will be generated and it will work. Um, yeah, cool. Yeah, this one. So what we did just to simplify it's that it works with your local IP. But yeah, as I just say, I think it's really interesting as well to introduce a static IP. So for example, if you put it on a farm, even if they you know, restart the router, you still have the same IP and everything works properly. Right? Mm -hmm. but you can have problems. Um, and uh, and yeah, if you have a domain, there are a couple of ways to do it actually that are documented here on the repo. No, one it's yeah with a with a local DNS as suggested by Jose, or if you have a, a um, or if you have a, yeah you, if you can do it with C name that makes sense as well. Actually, yeah for for uh, this DNS uh, for this DNS or using Pyhole, the only thing that you need to do is to change a config JSON file. That it's on the boot partition of the um, of the yeah of the operating system image, and introduces the NS servers pointing to the pihole uh, IP. Uh, you can do it in a couple of ways uh, with the Valena CLI or out directly from the um, from the Valena Cloud uh, account, and then as well when you introduce yeah the yeah it's here on the mount boot uh, it's JSON. And then when you define the static IP address, it's already documented on Belena. Uh, I will introduce maybe the links later here, but it's good to get rid of the DNS uh, part of the of your connection profile because automatically what Belena does is introduce the DNS of Google, the 8.8.8.8. So if you delete that part and introduce a static uh, IP address and then do this change on config JSON, then it will use the DNS servers on your Pi-hole or whatever service that you are using for local DNS. If not, you can use the C name um, on another place. Like Jose, in this case, is using yeah, it is uh, Cloudflare um, for for redirecting uh, a, a domain, a subdomain that he already has to a local IP address. That's that's interesting as well. If you want to have access uh, from outside to your local IP address. So if you need to have this access, this is a this is a, gr a good solution. On this, if not, if you just want to have access only if you are locally, you can use the other solutions. Well, if you have to access the server from the outside, you will have to somehow and and use not the local IP address but the IP address of your or the, the IC, your 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 provider is. Mm -hmm. Okay. Nice. And just like That's to it. finish, like to highlight, uh, this is currently working just uh, like in the Raspberry Pi 3, 4, Balina Finn, and using the concentrators, the RAC 2245 and the RAC uh, 2287, right? Correct. Correct. Yes. Perfect. Nice. And nice, hopefully, nice. with the next RAC concentrator, it will also work. We'll have awesome. to do some tests next week. Next week? Awesome. You're really happy. Hopefully. We have to make a, a video about that. <laughs> yeah, you should support the USB one. That's pretty cool. The the USB yeah, concentration. Yeah, the USB with, concentration. With yeah. Super. Yeah, oh, we don't sure, yeah. it. It's super also like tiny, it's super handy. I really like it. It's amazing. Really good job. Oops, sorry. <laughs> um oh, what is yeah. this? Just, just, uh, it's the USB concentrator, so you just as a USB port, uh, mm -hmm. you connect it. Okay. To, it's it's all external, comes in a box. Um, so like a USB modem, it's so to compare yeah. it. Yeah, and it, it works on x86 or so on uh, Intel it, devices. Yeah, and ARM. yeah, it, uh, it even it's works on Windows. Even works on Windows, which is the one interesting application for that. So if Valena can run on Windows, then uh, you, you can have a market there. <laughs> <laughs> Your next challenge, Mark. <laughs> I do have a question. Like, what's what sort of do you know? How much data does the communication to Valena use in this case? Just for that status, ping. And... Mm -hmm. This is something that uh, actually we we had some discussions last week to do some calculations. Or uh, the the thing is that for. Um, so there are several services that talk, uh, well, that, that use um, the network, right? There is a supervisor, which is an API, which is just, you know, doing polling. There is a VPN, 
um, there is a TLS uh, and, and, and another service that I don't remember. So actually for every new version of Belina OS or new version of the supervisor, which is uh, let's just say that another container, uh, there are changes. And what we are trying to do right now is to do an exact calculation for each Belina OS version and for each device type, mm -hmm. um, what's the network uh, usage of that. So I'm, I don't know exactly. So we have numbers for uh, a specific OS version, which is old. Yeah, uh, but uh, we are going to have these numbers uh, really soon. Yeah, it will be interesting because you know, like basic station, if you're running like on a two G connection, which is still some countries in the world still use, it the latency is too high. So if you run a local server, it makes sense for that, mm -hmm. as long as you can keep some small amount of data going by. That that will be an interesting thing as well, like for a developing country or something like that, where you don't have much connectivity. There's no like LTE or 5G or uh, like you, you just have yeah, the basics. That's, that's a really interesting use case. Very yeah. good idea. Maybe you could have a look at how much data does it use. It would be interesting. Yeah, yeah. Once once I will have the, those numbers, I will let you know. So this is a task that this week get into uh, brainstorm yeah, yeah. conversations at Palena. Good. Uh, yeah. Nice. Actually, like we had a, a like a question right there. Uh, however, like the guy who made it, it was not in the beginning of the session, but basically it's like, this is like a, like a community project, like a pet project, he call it, uh, or it's a usable uh, repo and as us to carry a live, live track, uh, traffic. Uh, as, we, as Jose and Mark mentioned in the beginning, this is an on progress project. So yeah, this is just like the first launch of the repo. There are more things to do on it. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, the idea is to keep it supported and maybe in the future it uh, can serve for people to, to deploy and handle um, like lag traffic in more robust way. Yeah, I mean, at, at the end it's using the, um, the the repos that are out there, right? We are using the basic station based on the Semtec uh, basic station repository, mm -hmm. uh, but Belenified, right? And we are using the that the things the stack uh, repositories so, um, the only thing it's it's just bake it uh, for you uh, yeah. so we haven't tested massively yet but it should work i don't see why in that should uh, work and this is why as well we are calling the community to exactly. contribute on it and to test it and feel free to introduce issues and pull requests so we are very we will be very happy we already had so our hope. first try from the community manuel already <laughs> Brian, during <laughs> uh, the session, which is awesome. Thanks, Manu, for, for sharing your experience and for testing it. So yeah, I think that's all for, for today's session. Uh, you can find like all the links uh, that Soche and Mark uh, shared today in order to make your own uh, deployment, the local deployment, which is like pretty nice. Also, Soche and Mark, thanks for, for preparing this for us, like for this session especially, and for demonstrated today. Uh, hopefully we are going to have more collaborators in the near future uh, jumping on this project and make it make it bigger. Uh, happy to to chat with you always during these sessions. And I don't know, Jose, if you want to add something else uh, to the sessions before end it. Who, me or the other Jose? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay. Yeah, I'm, it's a good session. Yeah, I, I want to see this. There's there's some interesting the stuff that can we you can use this for. Mm -hmm. So yeah, definitely want to see it go. Super. Yeah, yeah. I'm very sorry for the problems on my connection. Now it's, it's it looks like it's working, but yeah, <laughs> it has been hit all the time. Yeah, <laughs> that was a real yeah, the real the demo effect. <laughs> <laughs> was my was my Firefox. Uh, Anyway, completely, complete. That always happens. I I have been there for three sessions, so I know how how I know that feeling. <laughs> but yeah, uh, thanks for for to all today for joining us. Uh, if someone is watching like this video later, uh, feel free to leave your question in the comment section. I will be super happy to address them uh, during the comment section or in our community channels. Uh, as always, we hope to see you next week and happy hacking, folks.
Happy hacking, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Happy hacking.